Hello, hello, hello. How are you going? What's happening there today? <clears throat> what about that production value, eh? My lord. It's just getting better and better and better. All right, so... Thank you for joining me and uh, thank you so much for all your support and your sharing and your love and your likes and all that stuff. Um, please continue, continue the sharing. That's the only way it, uh, it's going to get bigger. It needs to be bigger. I need to, need to get it bigger, 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 bigger. <sighs> it's always an issue. Uh, but no, thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. Now, as you can see today, I am sat in front of my painting that is uh, part of the Japanese Watercolour Institute exhibition, which would be great. It is called Finally Relaxing. Oh, crack, you know, crack the old neck. Um, but no, thanks for joining us. All should be good fun. Good, 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 good. Good, good, good fun. I'm not feeling very articulate today, which is kind of shit considering I'm supposed to be teaching you how to do stuff. Nah, I should be fine. Um, now, the first painting we're going to do, like, as I say, today it's all about shapes, right? What I mean about shapes in paintings are things like we can simplify things a lot when we think of shapes and how important they are. So whether you think about it or not, um, it looks like I'm doing the autofocus thing again, which I don't like. So I'll just fix that up. Um, but whether um, whether it's a conscious thing that you think about or not, um, it doesn't really matter. But what what happens is when you're going down the, down the street or whatever and you're driving around and you're looking for things to paint, uh, the things that catch your eye primarily, well, you've got, you've got two things. You've got... The light but most commonly it's the shapes um, if you go down the street and you're seeing a whole bunch of nice spires and some round things next to it some squares they're the things that stick in our mind and uh, allow us to have some cool paintings because the shapes are so 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 important and it's also a good way for simplification as well um, just to double check, uh, if anyone's there, who's there? Say hello. 
people are coming in now. Um, can you tell me if my voice is in sync, Justin Timberlake, or out of sync? I need to can fix that. Um, but yeah, shape's a good way for simplification. So if you think of, you know, instead of seeing a whole bunch of buildings and skyscrapers and windows and all that, just think of them as boxes and rectangles and, and you know, your, your life will be much, much easier in your painting world. Um, now, I assume everyone can hear me okay. Out of sync, maybe. All right, let's have a look, Dana. Thank you. I'll see if I can just muck around with that for a second. Six. It's a mic delay of six. Let's have a look. Is that better? Is that better? Is the out of sync a little bit? A little bit? Or is it worse? Better? Worse? So worse? That's going to be much worse there. Much worse. Okay, I just want to make sure everything's good. And things change all the time. The, the, these parameters change. It's really annoying. Better there on four or five. I reckon that's good. Okay, cool. Good stuff. Well, it only really makes a difference when I'm talking to you guys to the camera. But anywho, let's have a look at this first picture we're going to do. It's all based on shapes, and it's all about abstraction, really. There's not much here. This photo was its actually a screenshot of... Um, a relative who lives down the central coast. Um, uh, g'day, Dave. How you going, mate? How you going? Um, relative who lives down the central coast. It was raining, pissing down rain, and he just filmed stuff out the front of his car window, and I just took a screening of it because it was uh, had a couple of cool elements. Now, I'm going to change a couple of things, but obviously you can see the photo is a screenshot of that. So it's not the greatest of quality, but it doesn't need to be. So what we want to do, we want to focus on the shape and the vibe. So the shapes here, you've got um, this van. It's problematic compositionally. I, I did a rough painting of this yesterday and put a car in there. Uh, and it just doesn't work. I've done a drawing with the van. It doesn't work. I'm going to put a couple of figures just to add a bit more movement. A um, couple of figures here. Um, that's fine. Um, but shape-wise, you've got this... Whoop, You've got whatever that is in the uh, in there. It looks like a seat of a bench or something like that. A bit of bench, a bit of square. You got a whiz bin, signs, verticals leading us up into the sky, which is great. And I think this bit here on the right was just a smear on his windscreen or something. Um, and it's not really readable. Like it's hard to know what's what, but that's cool. That's what we want. Um, and just some nice, nice shapes, nice shapes. But anywho, we'll, do, we'll get rid of that. But yeah, some some good stuff is going to come through this. So what I've got here, I just want to reiterate to people. Brushes I use primarily. Um, Skoda Pearlers are the best synthetics in my view. Let's go to mops, amazing, amazing. And some kind of sable, I think we've got some Art Spectrum sable stuff there at the moment, which is great. Um, yeah, Skippy brush, do you know what, Skippy? I can't find Skippy. I think my little boy uh, has pissed it off somewhere, which is quite shot, because I like that little Skippy one. But anywho, we'll have to make another one, that's good. All right, so let's change over to that. Uh, and now let's do this and that which can sit. So if you if you're painting along, good stuff. Uh, try to um, I mean I, I put the reference photos in the um, in the Facebook group so you can check all that out. And yeah, let's get cracking. Um, any questions before we start? Any any issues? Any concerns? Do you have any? I mean, can I counsel you about anything? Oh, I'm not a professional, but I'll, I'll have a listen. Just spraying some water. 
good old colors. And yeah, all right, well, on that note, I did um, get notification this morning that my article has been published in the UK. It's an article on skies, which is great. I wrote it about, oh, it feels like a year ago, but obviously with well, COVID and all that stuff, everything got post -pared. But no, I um, it's very cool. First uh, international publication, which is great. Awesome. So things are, things are getting there. But the amount, I mean, anything you guys can do to help, whether it's uh, purchasing a painting, whether it's sharing the pages, all that stuff, just help away. That'd be amazing. I really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, share it with your mates. Let's get let's get these, these groups bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and stronger. And uh, yeah, we'll be laughing. So it'll be a very, very cool. Okay. Let's do it. Let's paint this thing, eh? All right, so. Establish a rise, and this will be nice and quick, this painting. So there'll be uh, no fuffing about. It'll all just be getting stuck in. It'll be beautiful. All right, let's go for a horizon line. We need to put the horizon line in a decent spot so that it gives us enough room to get the reflections and things Oop, going. So probably go about, oh, yeah, about there, somewhere there. Yeah, that'll do. I'm not gonna paint the hills in usual stuff. You guys know that. Now I'm going to just put another little shoreline there, but obviously it's just whatever it is. There we go. And put a couple of figures. Well, let's put a wheelie bin about there. And there's a couple of different signs and things there. And constantly looking for ways to exaggerate things and make them a bit stronger but the shape is what we're looking at, looking at here so if you're talking shapes you're talking lots of rectangles here but you've got some curves in the rocks it'll be over here and you have some figures which I will now put in but I'm going to bring that up a bit further yeah, just use the wheelie bin as a bit of a scale reference. Hey, Jack, how you going, mate? Good to see you there. Thanks, man. Put your whiz bin as a reference, like a scale reference, and just see, well, how tall are we in relation to whiz bins? We're about here somewhere. So a couple of figures over here. As I say, I'm keeping that... Um, that... Um, van out of it. It's just too... It's just too solid there. And there's a couple of little rectangles there. And that's kind of all we need to do drawing wise. There's not much to it. It's all about the brush strokes and the painting process here. So yeah, should be cool. All right, let's, uh, let's paint some shit. All right, I'm going to Bit of a spray, bit of a spray, bit of a spray. Let's do this nice and quick. Just graze off the palette, whatever. You don't want to make it too strong though. You don't want it too strong. Make it too strong, you kind of lose the light. It's, a, it's an overcast sort of day, rainy scene, etc. So if you make the sky too strong, you're going to lose all of your light and your luminosity. But I'm going to bring it down so there's enough there to make it interesting. So I'm just going to bring that down all the way. All the way down to the horizon line only, not over that. And I'll get little bits of something. Whatever. Whatever. That's how, uh, that's how important it is. We're just 
suggestions of clouds and it's um it's just a little bit of stuff not much they're just wispy dare i say it shapes they are shapes mate shapes all right so we can because we didn't paint here i wanted to keep that dry because i want some dry brush in the next section in that water surface so i'm mixing up kind of like the color that's there if we can just dirty muddy blue in the um so the test painting I did for it yesterday, I made it a bit too vibrant. So I'm just gonna have it be quite dull. So what's happening today? Is everyone, anyone doing anything for Melbourne Cup? Does anyone care? I don't really care too much. I'm not horse racing thing. I think it's, you know, overrated but you know people are into what they're into all right so i've got a bit of paint here which is lucky as we're painting um, now i want to try to obviously i'm um keeping some dry brush action going which is great now i want to try just to keep Lots of little white specks because they're just going to form our, our waves and whitewash and stuff. But I want to keep it a tiny bit lower than the horizon. I want a bit of a, a bit of white at the horizon line. But don't try and force it too much. Just paint it and let it let it do its thing. As we get down closer, we take care not to paint over, not to paint over the things that'll do some work for us. <clears throat> get rid of any funky lines. That's about it. As long as not too much white there. Yeah, that should do us. Hmm. Yep, that'll do us. Yeah, I can imagine. I think the whole world is... I mean, I'm not into politics and I certainly don't know anything about it, but uh, it'd be good not to have to see his face anymore or listen to what he says. That would be... That's just one thing that'd be good about it. Uh, but anywho, we'll see what happens, eh? Now, I'm just getting a, a little bit of turquoise. Yeah, just a couple of lines here and there, and it, it'll just break it up a little bit for us. All right, so <clears throat> we've got the opportunity here to put some soft mountains in the back. It's all still quite wet. But what I want to do before that... I actually want to just paint a little bit of warmth here. Just a little bit. Just here and there. And I'm just going to bring it down like so. We've got some downward sort of vertical strokes. Going. And that's just sort of give so we're painting reflections there really. So let's have a look. We go here. Just paint reflections at the moment. And leave a lot of white, a lot of dry brush type marks. Try not to flick things, excuse me, flick things into the sky if you can. Avoid it. I mean, ultimately, it doesn't matter too much, but we want to avoid it if we can. A 
Yeah, the way I feel about politicians is if they're... Uh, the desire to become a politician should be enough to stop you from ever doing so. I don't know. It's weird people that want to do that job. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of it. That's all I want to really do there. Oh, excuse me. Mm -mm -mm. Now I'm getting... Yeah. And boring too. That's the thing that I don't get. I think I was saying the other night, I've got a, got a mate who... Um, Every time there's an election on, he like here he has a party and stuff. Loves it. Freaks me out. Yeah, I'm just while this is all still wet up here, I'm just getting a little tone in there that'll be quite distant, and I'm going to go a bit stronger still as we come forward and over the top of that. Just keeping it nice and cool colours. We don't want uh, don't want too much warmth when we're trying to push things back and give it a bit of distance. Warm colours always come forward. But you know, something like that's cool. Ah, oh, pardon the pun. And I like that furring and things. That's good. Now, tone a bit stronger. So I'm taking that same tone and just tainting it with a little bit of neutral tint. And a tiny bit more ultramarine. Cool it down. Just strengthen it up. This is where our big hill will come in. Shape-wise, I don't care. We're just making it work tonally. As long as we're making it work tonally, we're laughing. Mm -mm -mm. Cool. Looking good. Now, I'm going straight over the figures. I don't care because they'll be dark and coloured in. Yeah. Bit of reflection there. All right, that's kind of cool. See, I like how this is nice and furry and soft, and there's a little bits here blowing up, but I like how that sharp variety of edges. Laughing. Now, honestly, um, it's a little bit. I reckon we could get away with it. Let's let's do it. So a bit of. Bit of warmth just for these rocks and weird shapes just at the horizon at the uh, on the I guess it's a footpath of some description something there something like that and We'll get a little bit of dark in there as well. Just so it softens, it's just giving it a bit bit of volume. It's like when you do trees and you you put a nice bit of darkness at the at the bottom of the, the tree. And it just gives the foliage more volume and all that. So it's kind of all we're doing there. And just having a look, is there anything else I can do while it's still dampish? Don't think so. Not much. That stuff's fine. People will be fine. All right. Cool. All right. So, a bit of texture. All good. We're happy as Larry. We need to dry it off so we can start... Uh, Finishing it all up. Believe it or not, finishing it up. It's not much to this piece. It's a nice, simple 
piece, but it's all in the brushwork and all in those, that composition. And freshness, it's really good to be fresh. Hit the paint, let it do its thing, and leave it alone. I think it's a constant thing that every watercolorist battles with, is keeping your work fresh. It's easier said than done. Okay, that'll do. All right, so just sort of thinking ahead about this, I'm going to put some nice darker tone here. I'll leave that light. Yeah, nice reflection. So it'll be good. It'll be good. Um, just like any demo, this painting, if you end up liking it, uh, always uh, it's for sale. Uh, any demos I do online like this will be sale for sale for actually $130, uh, including postage, unframed. Um, and you're laughing. That'd be great. Uh, just let me know. First to write, uh, sold in... The YouTube comments here, or email, whatever. First to write sold is in. Uh, okay, let's have a look. We need to grab this brush. So I'm just sort of a darkish, warmish color. I don't want it to be too... Um, it's sort of a dark gray, uh, warm gray. Mm, that's a bit too brown. Bit of purple. It's a bit of purple and a bit of blue. Ah, too much blue. That's what happens when you are all a uh, bit careless. That's all right. Okay, so using the tooth of the paper, I'm just bringing up little little marks and keeping a few little spots here and there. Uh, uh, sludge has, has been used up at the moment. It's been used. There's a new batch brewing in the laundry. Um, but now nah, the uh, sludge bucket that I had is all all done. Okay, so while I've got that sitting there like that, I'm going to just with a bit of water get some. Just looking at where these things are going to be, just want to get some rough downward facing dogs some rough uh, verticals going in which will give us the uh, will give us the thing there that'll be good now we'll go back in with some slightly thicker ugh, slightly thicker stuff sludge bucket here yeah, like uh, ooh. Got a bunch of birds there. That's okay. I'm going to leave those birds there. That's fine. Sludge bucket. It's, it sounds like there's supporting, supporting black flag or something. So that's a bit. I'm just going to soften it a little bit there. Yeah, we'll get a tiny bit of that in there as well. Good. All right, so that's cool. I'm happy with that. Now I'm just going to start bringing in the colors and the shapes. 
pardon the Foo Fighters reference. And look at this, I'm using pointy brush. I'm not worried about making it perfectly, uh, perfectly straight and neat and tidy. And I don't mind this whole bleeding thing. It's good. It's what, what we're, you know, we're painting. We're not, we're not drawing, we're not doing technical drawings. We're painting stuff. So let's just go under here. We'll do that one a bit taller than it is in real life. Whatever that is, light pole or something. And this will do the same. And got these little bits over here. So we can start putting them in and all they are like just use your brush strokes I mean this is what what we're here for we're using a pointy brush nothing neat and tidy just do it quick remember we're you know we're painting here we're, we're expressing ourselves we're not being boring bastards and coloring in express yourself no I shouldn't sing Madonna ever nobody should ever sing a Madonna song Except for the ones that Niall Rogers wrote. What was the one that he did? The big one, uh, Material Girl, wasn't it? Actually, I have played Material Girl in a band. It was fun. All right, so we digress. Let's have a look. Now, with these little things, I just want to give the impression that there's nice rainy reflections. There goes the puppy dog. Someone's at the front door. So this is all demonstration about being quick, nice and direct. All right, and I'm going to place this one's you know, husband and wife hanging out or something like that, I don't know. These join them up and uh, I'll put a hat on them too, I reckon. Shopping bag. So what's going on? Talk to me, people. Talk to me. OK. 
go. Let's do that. Oh, thanks, Carol. Yeah, it's a um, it's a constant work in progress. That whole economy of brushstrokes thing. It's uh, it's so important as a watercolorist, um, but so elusive sometimes. So thanks for recognizing that. Hey, no, I am. I've been painting pretty much my whole life. I had a um, I'm forty four. Reluctant to say. Um, I had a long break in the middle when I concentrated on uh, trying to be a rock star, but that didn't work out. But I've always loved painting probably more. I still do gigs and that, but I I kind of like, I like painting more than I do music these days. Um, and yeah, so probably taking it seriously now for about 10 years or so. Best part of 10 years. About yourself, are you a painter? What I want to do is go, I'll fix me birds up and turn them into birds. You're a watercolorist? And where are you from? I don't think we've spoken before, have we? Welcome. Yeah. yeah. This has just gotten a bit too heavy. So I'm just going to show the tissue. Pull some of it out. That's better. That's better. You're in Ireland. Wow. Doing gua stuff. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, I'm just going to bring that down. Bit of a reflection. Now there is something in the middle, like in that bin there. It's probably the pole, but just want to get that reflecting down. And almost there. You know, this exercise in shapes. You know, things don't have to be spelled out all the time for it to uh, to give you a successful picture. So, a couple of little highlights here and there. Good old gouache, it helps. Yeah. Yep, happy with that. That's good. There's. One thing that I have to do once once I dry it off is just one more thing and we'll be laughing. And it's it's incidental, it's only little, but it'll make a lot of difference and give the painting a bit more depth. I mean you probably guess what it is already. Whereabouts in Ireland are you? And how do you say your name? I don't want to uh, stuff it up. Cool. 
So you pronounce the J, it's a hard J, Najo. Najo, Najo. And is that you or James Gandolfini? All right, let's have a look. I'm just gonna get some dryish kind of paint. In Dublin, love Dublin, great city. I've only been there once, but it was for a few days, loved it. I'm just gonna put some directional lines in. It, uh, it definitely helps with perspective sometimes. Well, all the time, really. But you just gotta be, you know, subtle-ish about them. Little lavender. That's it. One painting done. See, this one was always going to be that quick one about nice shape, shapes, tone, gives us everything. I dig it. All right. We're going to go straight on with this. Straight onto it. What do you reckon? Did you, do you like that? I like the piece as a as a piece as a composition. I think it's really nice. Um, yeah, it's it's different. I like the freshness of it. It's working well. So I'm just going to. I'll leave that there for a sec so you can check it out. Just going to put another piece of paper down, which will help with the next painting, obviously. Okay. All right, two seconds. I'm just going to mute the microphone for a moment. I'm just going to go to the loo. Won't be a sec. Hey, hey, there we go. Is that working? Can you hear me? The, uh, I dropped the microphone, not in the loo, which is great, um, on the floor and it's got a big red light on it now. So can you still hear me? That's the great thing, Carol. Um, that's it's a really big part of the way I paint and the way I approach painting is uh, is I think that uh, too often the problem uh, or a lot of problems come from artists looking for spectacular scenery and it just doesn't work. It, it, it doesn't happen. It shouldn't happen. I just think it's uh, the wrong way to go about um, seeking an approach. I think that you need to be able to use your own artistic vision and the best way to do that is by taking the ordinary scenes and yeah converting them into something interesting and, and cool because you know the biggest mistake 
amateurs make is, and I mean that respectfully, the biggest mistake amateurs make is uh, trying to, you know, look for amazing sunsets and all that sort of boring crap. You know, you've got to you've got to go for the things that are, you know, diamonds from rocks and all that sort of stuff. That's what we're after. Now, isn't this amazing watching me tape down a piece of paper? It's incredible. Now, we're going in portrait orientation for this, for today's main painting. This one will take a bit longer, and that's fine. We'll go slower, a bit more deliberate, and it's yeah, definitely trickier. Okay. Wasn't that just riveting? You watching me do that? Just make sure the camera's behaving itself. Let's see. Okay, I need to zoom out a little bit. Is that the one? There, come on. There we go. That. There we go. Ah, oh, adjustments. Isn't it good? Okay, well, we need to talk about this scene. Get rid of that one. Hey. Let's change the autofocus again. Stupid thing. Anyway, um, this scene and I'll show you, I don't know where it is, I, I did, it was not my photo, I did, it was on a free reference photos thing somewhere. Don't recognize the building 100%, but uh, it's a cool subject. Cover me, because that's always better. Um, big things to look for here, compositionally, it's all pretty cool, but these sort of scenes, uh, these art looking through archways and all that kind of thing, um, there's a lot of traps, a lot of things to try and avoid and things to make your life easier. And simplification is one of those things. Uh, the big thing for me here is obviously with whoever's taking the photo, it's going, oh, cool, straight down the guts, you know, looking straight down the middle. It's all center of the frame and all that. So we're going to throw it off kilter. We're going to move that over a little bit we're going to exaggerate some figures in the front put a couple of big ones in there and we're going to really simplify that distance so there's going to be still lots of people but i'll show you how to paint them in a way that is easy it's no question it's easy um and we'll show you how to do this how to tackle this arch not worry too much about all the light and the shadows and all everything there but we'll make the uh, shadows that are there really quite strong so that we get nice vibrant light at the end for the end result but um, no thank you I appreciate you checking this out let's have a look at that let's go there let's make that a bit smaller let's move that over to there that's better it's a better spot for it cool so if you've got, while we're waiting to get started on this one, if you've got any mates or anything like that that you uh, want to invite along, just share the, share the link with them now. Say, hey, you bored? Come and, come and watch this bloke paint pictures for us. And uh, it's good. It's good fun. Well, it's good to see my microphone still working because it's quite a worry there for a second I thought it was stuffed I thought it was completely stuffed mate drop it on the tile floor of the bathroom that's no good all right let's crack on Bit of drawing here, bit of drawing. That's okay. Drawing is good fun. So, usual stuff. We want to find a horizon line, 
And, and look, here's where my simplification comes in. If you have a look, let me just make this bigger again. If you have a look at the people and the, like, you know, think of the headline, everyone, everyone's heads are on the same level, but there's another level up. There's obviously a, a bridge or something with some stairs that go up to it. And there's another line of people above the main line of people. And just that's just not going to read in a painting. So everything's going to be on the one level. So you don't have to worry about that. So that, that whole background, and it is just that, it's a background, we'll treat it as such. You don't want to get caught up in making that the star of the show because it's not. It's the rest of it. It's the vibe, it's the light, it's the arch and the strong contrast. So we're going to simplify that. So the horizon line is, a, what I mean by that is essentially where the, the base of the building, the base of the distant building, which will be out there. We need, we need to give ourselves some room for the shadows and everything here. So don't be tempted to skimp on that arches best way to do them is to do a circle circle about there and get a couple of straight lines going I realize that looks a bit funny i apologize but that's just the um juvenile sense of humor that i have um, a bit Water. Mm -mm -mm. And there we go. And it doesn't matter there. Yeah, let's go there actually. I'm gonna establish where the floor is. Really? That's all. Yeah, sorry about that. Let's get rubber out. That's all good. We've got the rough shape there. That's all we kind of need there at the moment. So we'll straighten things up and everything in a second. But we've got... I think that's the... inside of things so let's go from about there to about there that's yeah we, that's where we're sitting Now we're talking roughly here. It's all very rough at the moment. It'll start to sing when we've got it all together. And just put a couple of little directional things. Need to rub some more stuff out. So yeah, I want to make this distance quite clean. So just careful to get rid of any pencil marks that you might have laying around. Which is easier said than done on this Baohong rough paper. So that's, I'm just squinting my eyes, just having a rough look at where it's all going. So, yep, yeah, cool. Happy with that. Uh, this building, so I say that's about the base there. There we go. And I am going to do this right in the guts. So compositionally, that's fine in this. Well, close enough. 
Cool. So we need to draw there. And I'm going to start putting in some figures, just rough markers where I want these figures sitting. There's a bit of a box or something there. Figures are about here. So just marks. This is where I'm showing you how to really get some nice nice crowd work going without having to, you know, spell everything out and paint really boringly, essentially. You don't want to paint boring. And big it there, why not? And we'll do a really big one over here. That's someone just out of shot. Now that and let's get our little light in here, which I think is really important. And perspective. There. Look at that. It's very, very tricky drawing, isn't it? Well, look, it, it kind of is. It's, it's something that's all got to be right. So head's on the same level, and I'll show you what we're going to do with when we paint those. It's not... I've just really spelled these ones out a little, a little more in the drawing so that, you know, it's a bit more obvious. But that's all we need to do with the, with the drawing. No, no more. What I do need to do though is just rub that out because I want it to be quite pale. I'm just not rubbing it out so I can't see it, but just so I can dull it down a bit. That's it. cool. And that's what I'm going to start with. That middle, this star of the show. Okay, color. Cool again because it's distant. Okay, so a bit of lavender I like. A bit of some sort of some sort of warmth there, but just marble it. Let's have a look. Yeah, nice. Okay, let's get it in there. Be very careful with the dome. Domes are a pain in the ass. But the trick to doing a dome like this is to do it quickly and to take care with where you're putting the spire, make sure it's all in the middle. It's very easy to get that wrong, like this bit. That's all it needs to be. That's it. And, and just use your brush, just, you know, I'm not copying things that are on the reference, I'm using my brush and you know, being an artist. You know, you, you're setting a scene. Eh? We're not, we're not colouring in. We are being creative. And all this just in light silhouette and it gives us the illusion of all sorts of stuff. And the biggest thing at the end will be It'll give us the illusion of that light, that light that we're all after at the back there. And I'm going to put a little bit of darker stuff at the bottom here. And I don't care about going over things like that. That's good. Just a tiny bit of darkness. And that's about it. That's how we want that. And with a little bit of that darkness, I'm just making it a bit thicker. And I 
just want to do something like that. That's it. No more to that at all. Now we can start doing the uh, hard parts. That bit's the easy bit. And I've deliberately done no sky because I, I can put it in later if I want to, but I've kind of got a vision of that just being so bright when the warmth comes down here. Should be all right. So, big brush and warmth. Now, it looks strong now because there's no water in there, but it won't be. Now, I want all this to go over these walls, and I'm going to try and keep the, the frame of the light nice and, nice and white. I don't mind here just going a bit crazy. It's good. Textures, whatever. It's where your uh, rough paper does you proud because it does a lot of that textural work for you. Now I'll tell you something about the arches when it, or the way I approach it anyway. Um, and that is the neater you try to make the arch because it, yes, it's an architectural feature. Yes, it's perfect, bloody blah, blah. But we're gonna use our artistic license and our brushwork to to give us some more funky results, some better, more artistic, I think, better results. So this this step now is just all about putting texture, getting, getting that warmth down so that we know that later on we're going to have some nice strong shadows. This is all going to be nice strong shadows with the exception of a couple of little bits of highlight. You can already kind of see, when you look at that, you can already sort of see how not painting the sky outside is, yes, I think it's a good move. I think it's a good move not painting it. All right, good. different textures. I mean, a lot of this stuff will disappear by the end of the, the painting, but it's good to have it there in case you, you get some magical moments that you just want to keep. Yeah. And you're never going to have them if you don't keep them. Simple. Right. Got to dry it off. This is the drying time for sure. So it's all warm. You notice it's all warm there because Shadow is going to be nice and purple and quite cool. And you just got to have that that uh, juxtaposition, the yin and the yang, the push and the pull, the contradiction, blah, 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 all of that stuff that makes watercolour so friggin' fascinating and difficult.
All right, so check out my website too, TonyWhiteWatercolor.com. Watercolor with a uh, O U R. Um, I've got some merchandise up there. Some I've messed around with a few of my painting designs digitally, and uh, got some cool products like tote bags and t-shirts and caps and bloody socks even. Check them out. It's all it's all very new, and uh, there's a few cool designs there. Check it out if you've got time. Christmas and all that. Thank you very much. All right. So the approach here, see. We've, got, we've still got to work big to small. So we always should be thinking that. Big shapes to small shapes. That's with the drawing, and it should be the way we approach our painting most of the time. You, know, you can muck around with it, whatever. But, so how I want to do it here. Um, <laughs> geez, mate. Um, uh, we want to... Um, we want to still work big to small, so the temptation would be to, you know, we'll start working background to foreground, which is, you know, the figures and all that. But thinking big to small more than that, so we, we're going to go uh, nice shadows and it's going to be light coming in from this way, so this bit's all going to be lit up, this bit's going to be dark, this bit's going to be dark. So we can even get <coughs> excuse me that came out of nowhere sorry about that we can even get a pencil if you want and write dark dark light and dark So you can see that, you know, shadow is going to come across here. You've got to think about these things before you paint. So my motto is, yeah, I paint pretty quickly, but I do think about it for a while. I think about what I'm going to do because your brush strokes are better when they're quick and fresh. So you've still got to think about it. You've still got to make sure it all makes sense. So light to dark. Let's start with that. All right. Really good way to do this. I just want to do it as a as a gradation, all right? So just water there. That's just so we can get a nice soft shadowing. Now I'm just going into whatever purpley colors left over. And I want to make it too weak. It's got to be nice and strong. And you've got to be careful, but you also, you have the power as the artiste, you have the power to leave things like broken edges. Perfect. Love it. It's painterly. All right. So don't think you have to spell everything out. Everything be clean and nice. Broken edges are beautiful things in watercolor. And that will be darker still over that side. But now what we do is we bring that over and Get some light just for clean water. Just try and make that arch a little bit nice. But that's all you want. You don't want anything else. All right. So that tonally, it's making a bit of sense now. It's good. Now I've got to come over here, make all that dark. So same kind of colors. We're going to layer a fair bit when we're doing this. See all that sort of stuff? It's great. Leave it. Whenever you find those. Now this has to be 
darker probably than all of this. So we're gonna get a few tones here. It's all about tone. And because we've got that warmth underneath, we want our shadows and our darks to be quite cool. So you get that juxtaposition. Lovely brush stroke. If I do say so myself. Ah, that was good. And that's that's what you're gonna have. I'm pushing down, releasing the paint. It's a textured wall, or it is in my painting. And we're just getting darker there. Yeah. Swear you've got to. Keep your artistic flag flying, you know? And the darkest will be this corner. Let's go straight into neutral tint. That's going to go around there. thick not much water want it to be nice and strong and also just put a bit of strength <coughs> excuse me can't shake this freaking cold I've got it's funny I um, went to the chemist yesterday to get some quadrils and whatever and it's like the chemist is you know oh you've got to have should have a covid test and all that look i get all that fair enough <coughs> excuse me but i haven't been here and our borders have been shut <coughs> excuse me <coughs> Even the symptoms are quite yeah but i wonder if we're ever going to get to a point now where people will accept a common cold on face value it's like, just because COVID turned up doesn't mean the common cold disappeared. It's okay. I mean, I probably will get a test just to be a responsible human being. But, yeah. It's funny. Excuse me for a sec. Oh, that's better. I just had a bit of a fit. All right. So that's all looking pretty cool. Happy with that so far. That's I'm not, not entirely convinced on that edge yet. I think that needs to be brought down a bit stronger. But I'm really conscious not to lose these little bits of magic that I didn't paint. All right, cool. Yep, all looking good. Quite happy with that. That's, I'm just sort of looking at it from the point of view that, look, I know there'll be a gate here. There'll be nice shadows. So there'll be light. And there'll be a gate here. We're all looking good. All good. But there is one thing I want to do that I've spotted that's annoying me. I just want to straighten that edge up there. Or do I? Maybe that's just better like that. <coughs> it's a bit of a fucking hell. 
Cool. Good. All right. Rock it. Now, I need to flick some water at it. I won't spit on it because chances are painting will be infected. <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, Jesus. Sorry about the coughing, people. It's really annoying. It's annoying me more than it is you, trust me. Okay, I'm going to dry it. We need to dry it now and uh, see how we go. See, look at this. This is These are the things to look for when I was saying uh, to paint things in a painterly way and not be too neat. So I wanted that arch, that shape there to be quite neat, but I love all this. I love this bleeding. I love that line there. I love these broken edges. Keep your eye on all that stuff. That's all the gold. Now I've just realised that while that's a bit damp, I just want to put in just some random warmth here and there just so it bleeds in and gives us a bit of texture. It's always good. Now it looks a lot stronger on the camera than it is in reality, but that's all right. Just that strength. We just want a bit of strength and a bit of watercolor magic. Okay, cool. Let's Start drawing that again. Yeah. I didn't actually want that to happen. It's okay. See? Don't panic, mate. Just mop it up. Should be right. Should be right, mate. Hmm. And it lightens up a lot as it dries off too, so don't be too scared to go strong, right? Alright, gonna give you a quick lesson in figures. So I'll just move that out of the way for a second. And I'll grab something. What's that? Yeah, that'll do me. Do this. Quick lesson in figures. Um, a cluster of figures. We're talking tone, right? So this is how we'll start doing stuff in the background. I'll kind of recreate what we'll do here. A couple of heads. Heads are all on the same level. They're just the size of the head dictates the size of the human, essentially. So. Join them all up. And by joining up, I mean literally just join the friggin' things up. You know, so it's a cluster, not a whole bunch of individual um, people as such. You want them joined? Guys. And make sure, like, generally speaking, as a general rule, we're talking uh, the torso or the bodies should be around seven and a half to eight times the length uh the size of the head um so muck around with your perspective get that right and then with sort of some closer stuff bigger stuff 
I'll put, you know, obviously, I'll, you know, do some dry stuff. There's a bigger head there. And I'm just doing this to exaggerate the point. All right. So, a couple of big heads. All right, this one. Just talking about that, perspective-wise. It's all right, proportion-wise, I mean. And it's going to be a little bigger. And this one, well, they're going to be out of shot completely. But you see what I mean, how that gives it movement. And the dry brush on the legs, really important. But all the legs, all the figures are on the same level. Oh, the heads are on the same level. Um, you know, don't stuff around with them too much. Just get it. You can even sort of do it like this. Either stupid brush strokes, whatever. Look at that. Turn them into figures, eh? Right, eh? Let's do it. Uh, nah. Nah. There's one there, he's just hanging around at the back. Yeah, there's another one there, he's walking along. You know what I mean? There's a whole bunch of figures without having to, you know, stuff around with anything. I don't want to see things like, there's the head. There's the shoulders and the torso. There's the arms. And there's the legs. No. Use your freaking brush. But anywho, that is a beside the point. Well, it's not beside the point. It's, uh, it's what we're doing. So, next step is, next step is figures. Okay, I'm going for the coolness again. And I tend to put, I tend to do my figures all a solid color and then wax them of like a solid neutral sort of color and um, then wax them colors on there for shirts and things. I don't. I don't paint a shirt or shorts or whatever. No, it's just boring to me. But same. Th this is exactly the same as what we just did in that little exercise. Just put in a few figures. We want to have the illusion of lots of stuff. And heads aren't round. They're oval shaped and they're connected to shoulders believe it or not they're not separate like some sort of weird alien okay it's a bit strong so I'm just tissue a little bit of it out now it needs to be I want an even stronger one in front and I'm warming it up a little bit as it comes forward as well. Oh, Carol, good stuff. Thank you. I really appreciate your support and your watching these videos. Love it. Thank you. Say good day to the art group for me. Tell them to watch as well. Thank you. Bye. Now, yeah, I'm going to put a figure about there. You know, middle, middle ground, I suppose. Just one of them there, and always I do some dry brush for um, legs and things. It gives it when the dry brush um, gives us the illusion of that movement without having to do too much work for it. You know, we'll eventually we'll put some color and things in there. Okay, now what I want to do, 
Um, yeah. All right, it's all that preparation and thinking ahead and, where's my hands? Um, <laughs> and uh, I want to do this shadow, big shadow, main shadow. But everything I've just done then has to be dry first. All right. So what I want, I want a bit of a gray. I think I'll go gray rather than purple or blue, but a cool gray. So we'll go neutral tint, bit of cobalt blue. And believe it or not, Teensy tiny bit of yellow, not that little. Ah, the Turner's yellow dries a lot, but I just want that little bit of yellow in there. Now, your shadow—it's quite sharp in the picture, but I want to have, I want to have a little bit of softness in it as well. So, all I'm going to do, because I know the shape's going to come from here, it's going to go. Sort of straight down, cut across there, and probably go down there. So it's going to be a big area of solid color. So I might bring it down a bit that way. So what I want to do is have a bit of that that's soft. Then spray a bit of water. And when the paint hits that, it'll soften up. So we're looking good. Cool, cool, cool. Um, right, nice. That's good. Happy, 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 joy, joy. Good, 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 good. Here we go. All right, let's say a prayer. Breath, no, not a prayer, they don't work. Uh, that's no such thing. All right, there we go, good. And let's go across there like that. Yeah, that'll be fine. Now we need to also Care of that a bit. Now, before it dries, you really got to get stuck in and get these shadows in there and go back into it. So, remix your color, it doesn't have to be the same. Um, common mistake I see is people just making their shadows a flat color all the time, and it's, it's just not the case. Go out and have a look, shadows are full of all kinds of colors with reflected light and all sorts. So don't be scared to um, be adventurous with the coloring of them. It's hitting that, it's nice. All right, so just gonna foreshadow that, pardon the pun. And just gonna join in there. Just a few little marks up there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, we're rocking. Rock it and roll on now. Look at that. There we go. This will look less crazy because it looks really steep at the moment. It'll look less crazy when we put these figures in. So don't panic. In fact, what I'll do, I'll get some of these 
heads in now. We'll do a big one here, didn't I? Alright, so that's going to be a big one. I do that. It looks silly, maybe. But let's. Oh, shit, move this out of the way. I didn't realise that was covering it. Um, that might look a bit silly, but that's okay. So do I. Look a bit silly, that is. So. Just getting a few marks in. Just a few references for us, that's all. And dry the shadow off and there we go. Oop, oop, oop. I just want to dry the edges of it really. I don't care about anything else. Because I still want those edges to be nice and crisp. Um, here we go with the bodies. So that one will be obviously very large. And that's cool. This one I want to Take a bit of care because I want that shape to be nice. And I don't mind them just melting into the shadow there. It's great. It's what we've all about watercolour. Don't know if you missed it before, but I said these demos are definitely for sale. Um, if you are keen on either of them or both of them, they're for sale, $130 each. That includes the postage and everything like that. And I'll send them to you. Or if you want both of them, Two, uh, two forty. If you want both, but there we go. Yeah, it's a big call because they're not finished yet. So, um, but just putting it out there. Yeah, and see how that just disappears. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, all the purples start coming out of this one a lot. Just wait, this might look a bit crazy right now, but it won't soon enough. Let me just, it's just gonna fade off to bugger all. But we need to make sure that, there's brush strokes, you just gotta let them go. Leave them. Yeah, make sure they've got an arm, I suppose. But I want to leave a little bit up to the imagination. I don't want to spell it out, that's for sure. And what you can do, just whack a colour in somewhere and a bit of water, just let it trickle, let it do some stuff. It's a bit of lavender, see what it. We'll see what happens. It's part of painting. You just go with it and see where you end up. And go from there. So same over here. I, I like all that disappearing. I like it. It's nice. So I do want to just mess up these bits a little bit more.
something there like that. Okay. See, they look like they're having a chat now, which is good. That person looks disconnected, which is also good. Is that better? Hello, hello, is that better? Can you hear me again? That was batteries, good old batteries. God, didn't give me a chance. Oh, thank you, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Phew, no worries, Anna. thank you. No, I'm liking this, it's a, it's a nice one. So, just with, Bit of dry brush. I say I'm just getting these little incidental perspective lines in. That'll help. All right. That's all we want to do there. Is the sound back on? You can hear me? All good? Just want to make sure you guys can hear me too. It looks okay from this end. But... Technology, eh? Technology. All right, so I'll just get some dry brush. I'm gonna get these gates in. Nice and simple, okay? So nice, thick, thick paint, pointy brush, and that's kind of it. Best way to do it, let's do it that way. Illusions. Awesome. Nice and loose, loosey goosey. It's the way to go. And over here, there's another one, but we don't have to spell that one out, that's for sure. It's behind all that anyway. I think a bit of that gate. Needs to be a little bit more, a little bit more detail on it. Just so it kind of reads as a gate. Yeah, that's cool. There's a little bit here. Let's 
something there. Up a little bit to dry brush, giving us around there. So it's handy. Texture. Don't like that gate, but I'll fix that with a couple of highlights. That'll be fine. I'm gonna dry it off. Put in a few colours. Before I dry it off, let's do the directional lines. Put in a few horizontals. What I will do is just feather that out a bit. That nice bit of movement there. dry then some color then we'll be laughing I like it. I think it's looking good. It's looking good. I think so anyway. Alright. Now, little bits of colour just to add a bit of movement to the thing. Let's go. Lavender. This guy's bag on. Bring it up. 
padding from there now. That's all right. I just still just want it to be the shape. So blend it in a bit. Might be all right. Scarf or something. Few bits of white highlight need it in this piece. I'm just gonna try and get a few a few little lines on this gate. Just a couple here and there. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all good. Lots of white highlights there. Little bits. This one will definitely have some highlight. Now, here's a question. I'll put it to the panel. Should I do a sky? Or should I leave it exactly as it is? Let's try and see if I can make that a bit more realistic. Coloring. Yeah, that thing needs a brightness. I know something I need to fix as soon as I've done that. All right. What do you reckon? Do a sky or not to do a sky? And what by sky, I'll just mean like graded wash of blue down to paper there. In the meantime, I'll just dry this off and reassess. I need to darken this side up. It's not working, at least here. That gate. The gate's okay, it's just the tone next to it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I was, kept thinking the gate was the problem, but the gate's fine. It's this tone here that makes it not work. So we need to glaze with some darkness. Gonna get it strong. But I want it to fe Oop, sorry about that. I want it to feather out.
So yeah, that's already working better. That's already better. Just from having that bit. I hate having to cut around things, but that's all right. Does the job. That's already better. It's amazing sometimes. You just see it and you go, oh, yeah, that's it. That's where it's going wrong. What do you reckon? Someone, what do you reckon? Do a sky or not? I'm undecided. I think it would look good, but I think it also, it may, we may lose a bit of the light. Ah. Hate making decisions. I know it's just a painting. Doesn't matter, that's my philosophy. <coughs> Excuse me. Just wonder whether it just needs that little bit more color. I don't know. Don't think so. I'm gonna leave it. But what I am gonna do is just give a bit of life and a bit of movement to some of this. Oh. Dark paint here, why not? Awesome. Not quite awesome. Not quite. I think, yep, I reckon it's done. I can't do anything more than that. I reckon I need to dry that off and then we'll be right. Figured out what I need to do. Okay, if you have a look closely in the reference, there is another light. The same level about there. It's just it's missing the actual light part. I'm just going to put that in, and it'll break up that shape of the lamp post and make it a bit nicer. Uh, 
The what stuff? You got the what stuff, baby. Right. Right. It'll do. It'll do. Dipping a tissue into some water. Right off. See what happens if we do this. I'm just doing this to break areas up and you know this area here is really dark, pretty heavy. So scratch a bit out, lift it up. It's uh, really nice. Let's do a sky. <laughs> Too late now. We're doing a sky. <laughs> That'll be good. Just bring it down with some water now. I think it needed it. I think it's it's actually brought it to life a bit. I think that was the right move. God, it's good when that happens. Nice and smooth gradation. Yeah, good. I'm happy with that. I'm happy I did that. Oh, thank Christ. I could visualize it, sort of, but I needed that confirmation. Anyway, that's good. Happy. This picture is complete. And it will look different as it dries off, because it's still, you know, used a lot of shitload of paint in this one. So, it'll uh, come to life even more as it dries It'll change itself up a bit. What do you reckon? Do you like that? I think it's a it's a cool scene. I didn't quite nail this section, but that's okay. You you uh you only live once. It's good. Um, like I say, paintings are for sale. If anyone would like to buy any of my demos, $130 each, including postage. Um yeah, just looking at that, I, I I am really happy with putting that uh, that sky in. One thing that's happening to it right now, as I laid it down flat, was that it was just starting to pool around the edge. So I'm just going to give that a quick mist, and that'll run down and be a bit smoother um yeah nice happy with that happy with that happy with it for sure i think it looks good um what's everyone else up to today what is that going with that lighting um what's everyone else up to anything exciting going on not much going on here i've got to go into the sit into the city into hobart and go to the vodafone shop because we got the new phones, we've got to trade the old ones in. Seems to be a decent thing. Right.
Okay, cool. Well, not much going on. If you guys uh, can please, please, please do me a favor and share this page, like the YouTube channel, share all the videos with your mates, annoy the shit out of them with it. I'd love it. I'm uh, about 300 hours away, watch hours away from uh, being able to monetize on YouTube, which is all very exciting. So hopefully it means that everything will uh, work out nicely. <sighs> shit ton of work so i appreciate every little bit of support that you guys uh can give financially sharing otherwise i don't care all good i really appreciate any of it um and all of it thank you and watch this space more stuff coming all the time i'm constantly trying to change things up and um keep things fresh but uh just try new things and you know my business model is such that it's all just a funnel with a whole bunch of different little bits and pieces going in. And if I can uh, continue on that way, basing it all around painting, fucking life's good. So thank you very much. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'll post these paintings once they uh, dry off and uh, let you know how they look. But thank you. Adios, amigos. I'll see you soon. Barbecue and a couple of beers before you pick the kids up. That sounds all right to me. Uh, sounds good. What have I got on? Uh, yeah, Vodafone and pick the kids up and yeah. exciting shit. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Cheers, mate. I'll catch you later. See you. At very least, I'll see you Thursday night. Cheers. Cool. Bye, guys.